form of ambiguity. Cause everyone here under the sound of my voice. And as many that are watching to be blessed. Let Jesus be praised tonight. Thank you father. In Jesus name we pray. I thought I would hear a louder amen. Alright. Tonight we will be continuing on the series we will be teaching on. We will be teaching on the new man. And part of what we will be saying is the fact that when a man says I gave my life to Christ. That puts a responsibility on the man. That since you gave your life to Christ, you do everything to sustain that life you gave to him. However, John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, he gave. Now, he gave his life, we have nothing to give. We use several scriptures in the course of our teaching. I will just do a few of them to refresh our memory. In Ephesians 2.8, Ephesians 2.8 simply said, Not of our works, lest we should boast. It was not the work we did, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. So if it is a gift, you didn't have anything to give, you only came to receive. So we didn't give our lives to Christ, we came to receive His life. Because when we know that we came to receive His life, that responsibility, that pressure we put ourselves under to perform, will no longer be there. We'll find our true identity in Him. So it is from within that Christ is determined to be revealed. From within the believer. And this was the revelation Paul had. And he mentioned this to the church in Galatia. So today we'll be starting from there. About the church in Galatia. What Paul had to say to the church in Galatia. Galatians chapter 1. We're reading verse number 1. Number 15 and 16. Thank you Jesus. He said, but when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, take note, verse 16, he called me by his grace, to reveal his son in me. The purpose of the call was to reveal. The purpose was not for Paul to find another person outside of him. Our revelation must be found in him. It is not something that we are trying to do. It is what we find in him. We've said it before that the communication of your faith become effective, effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ. So, uh, it is from within that Christ determines to affect every aspect of our life from within because he is to reveal his son in me. So, and this happens from within. Now, when we live this kind of life, the stress is off. We now discover that our identity it's actually Christ. We have no identity of our own. Everything is that the Son be revealed in me, not outside of me. There is no pressure on me. I'm not trying to do something to make it happen. So what is identification? Because in the course of our, our, our teaching, we'll be talking so loud about identification. Identification is actually acknowledging Christ's work and allowing ourselves to be changed by Him from within. That's what identification is. I'll say it again. Identification is actually aligning Christ's work and, sorry, acknowledge, acknowledging Christ's work and allowing ourselves to be changed by Him from within. I said it for the last time. Identification is acknowledging Christ's work and allowing ourselves to be changed by Him from within. So, the world reveals your true identity. So, to find this, we, might, we must find it in the world. Now, take note that it is the world that reveals our true identity. Outside of the word of God, our identity cannot be revealed. So, it is in the world our true identity comes alive. How do I know who I am? I must look into the world. What James called the perfect law of liberty. I must go there and find out who I am. So, my identity is actually in him. It's not imitation. Imitation is different from identification. Identification is an attempt to want to be. But um, imitation is an attempt to want to be. But identification is actually acknowledging Christ's work and allowing ourselves to be changed from within. From within. Praise the name of the Lord. I say praise the name of the Lord. So the believer, if he must be effective, he must allow his true identity 
that is Christ. Christ is our mirror. Christ is our identity. Christ is our everything. Now, we read the scripture in the course of teaching on this new man. And I'd like for us to read it again. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20. And Paul had this to say in Galatians 2, 20. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Take note. When the mob, the soldiers, all those people, they said, they went with him, crucify him. In their mind, they wanted to murder someone. But Paul said, no. In their mind, they thought it was a murder. But Paul was saying, no. While he was being crucified, I was the one being crucified. Now, what is that? That's a point of identification. Christ identifying with humanity. In his death and in, in his prayer, he identified with humanity. So Paul said, I was crucified with him. Now, the other was said, nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. So upon resurrection, also, I myself, I, I identify with him in resurrection. He identified with me in sin. I identify with him in the resurrection. And that has been the subject that we've been teaching on. How that if any man being Christ is a new creation, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. This is the point of identification. Now, very quickly, Second Corinthians and chapter 5, verse 21, on this same point of identification, we'll read it and then I'll take you to the bigger picture that we'll be looking at tonight. Praise God. He said, for he had made him to be seen for us. That's the point of identification. He became seen for us. We sinned, he was made seen. Take note, he did not sin. The Bible says, for he had made him to be seen for us. He didn't see, we sinned, he was made. He took our place. That is the point of identification. Who knew no sin? That we might be made the righteousness of God. So the purpose he identified with us is for us to identify with him in resurrection. So uh, he took our place, we took his place. And so we can't find our identity outside of him. He became us so that we we'll become him. Glory be to God forever. Now this is a new man. He became us so that we we'll become him. And this is the point of emphasis. Now when we begin to see this big picture, it helps our work. The pressure will no longer be on us. All over the world today, people are going through a lot of things. And they allow the environment to define them. Your environment shouldn't define you. What is happening globally shouldn't define you. What defines you is your identity with Christ. He identified with you in your worst state. When you were a sinner, he was made sin. In the same vein, now that he has been raised by the glory of the Father, and we have received this sacrificial work, we identify with him in righteousness. So my true identity is revealed in the word of God. So the word of God reveals who I am to me. I can't find it in my, in my world. I can't find it in science. I can't find it in politics. I can't find it in business. I only find that in Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Come part we explained today in First Timothy chapter 6 verse 17. When Paul charged Timothy to rebuke those who were rich in the world. He was not only talking about unbelievers. That letter was written to believers. First Timothy 6, 17. Before we get into the bigger picture. I have really not gone into that. Uh, he said, charge them that are rich in the world. That they be not high minded. Not trust in uncertain riches. Take note of the word. Uncertain. Everything in the world is transient. Nothing is stable. Nothing is permanent. So Paul admonished Timothy. He said, charge them. The word charge means, look, you need to instruct them. You need to talk to them. The reason is, a lot of people have trusted in the things of this world. And the things of this world fluctuate. The things of this world, they are not steady. And Paul said to Timothy, charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded. They shouldn't get proud with their connection, with their money, with their contact with their, their intelligence and all of those things have fallen like a pack of cards in the last few weeks globally because money has failed, intellect has failed, science has failed, business is packing up and there's, you know, there's a downward trend right now and all of those things they're the things Paul told Timothy. It means that we cannot trust in those things but look at what he said, but in the living God. God is constant. 
God is consistent. He said, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy? Is God against those things? No. But why we pursue those things? God must be in the front burner of our heart. Our identity must resonate. Our identity must be in the front burner. It shouldn't just be that we find ourselves in business, finding ourselves in science, finding ourselves in commerce, finding ourselves in politics. We cannot, even with money, we can't find ourselves. Money can define you. What gave birth to you is the word of God. And the only thing that can define you as a child of God is the word of God. Can I hear a name from somebody? So let me talk about what the, the, the new man is now. Because this was the prayer of Paul. Paul took time to pray. Because the word is our mirror. God's word is our mirror. God's word reveals our identity. Let's find out who we are as far as God is concerned. Because all of God's power was put together in Christ. And all of that power is being revealed in us. Have you noticed something? Church, I want you to notice something. Holy water has failed in this season. Carrying sand from one place for prayer has failed. Carrying a kerchief in the name of mantle has failed. There are people who have a pool, they call it pool of bestada. None of them are talking again. A lot of things have failed in the world where we live in. The word of God liveth and abideth forever. I thought somebody would say amen to that. That is only one thing that cannot fail. And that is why we must give priority attention to the word of God. Everything is failing in our world. And that's why I say children that are rich in this world. Not to be high-minded. No trust is uncertain riches. Riches are uncertain. It's about trust in the living God. Our trust must not be in all these things. They have all failed. And our identity cannot be found by those things. You know, people are trying to define themselves by the mansions they have. Men are running away from their mansion. They are trying not to be caught by the virus. All of these things are failing. No wonder I said the glories of this world, they fade away. But the word of God liveth and abided forever. Glory be to God. Now, in view of this, of height. It means that God got to the zenith of his operation. What am I communicating? He was at its peak. Beyond target. And in the height of height. The power. And this power, the 
demonstrated in the restoration of Jesus is at work in the new man. Hallelujah. That's exactly what we wanted to see. That all of these things we are talking about is at work in you. We are not just saying it got demonstrated in the restoration of Jesus. But we are saying that same power is at work in you. No wonder in Romans chapter 8 verse 11, we are not going there. He said, if the same power that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. This is the same power we are talking about. So the new man is not devoid of power. The new man should not allow his environment to give him identity. No, it is the word of God that gives us our identity. Come on, can I say that again? My environment should not give me my identity. It is the word of God that gives me my identity. It's a, it does the power. And that is the power that is being demonstrated here. The exceeding who brought along. Greatness, negatos. And the next one is power. The exceeding greatness of his power. Hallelujah. Which is dunamis. It is self-generating power. The word dunamis is self-generating power. So within you, you have what it is to make things happen. Stop looking outside for power. power. You are not void of power. Hallelujah. Am I communicating, church? This, are, look, this was the power demonstrated in the resurrection. And this power is at work in you. The exceeding greatness of his power. Oh, glory be to God. To us world who believe. This power is it to unbelievers or to us world who believe. To the new man. This power has been tested. It has been tried. It was the power that raised Jesus. It is called who put alone Megatos. And of course, Dunamis is, it surpasses. It's beyond target. It's in the height of height. It's at the zenith of its operation. And it is self, it's self-generated power. This power that raised Jesus is at work in you. Can you can you say raise your right and say it's at work in me? Say like you mean say this power is at work in me. Say it with me, it's working mightily in me. Somebody say hallelujah. That, like I said, to me it's it's, it's as all of the power released at the resurrection of Jesus or demonstrated. In the operation of his resurrection by God is concentrated only in this verse. He said, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe? According to the walking. There's another word called walking. The word walking is energial. Energial. It is it, it, effective. It's active. It's operative. Only in the believer. Energial. Energial. Just one verse. Six different words used in one verse to describe the oppression of the power that raised Jesus from the dead. And that same power is at work in you. Hallelujah. Glory be to God forever. I'm excited. I feel like flying tonight. I, I don't know about you. I feel like flying tonight. Hallelujah. And what is the exceeding? Who power long? Greatest negators. Power, dynamics, and work in the new man. And it shall according to the working, which is an angel of his mighty power. The other word is mighty power. Mighty. Let's look at the word mighty, which is called iskos. Iskos is forceful in display. Iskos is forceful in display. It's great. So this power is forceful. Nothing resists this power. Nothing stops this power. It's not the power you repair backward. Is forceful. Can I hear an amen from somebody? That's the word mighty. Mighty. It's oppressioner in the believer. Mighty is cause. Forceful in display. It's great. Abo shatalabadi. Mendo kula tu shana mengri ketesu pelaka. Mashonge tets epera kestodida. Mela hosh aleka. The days are gone when men move from the east to the west and to the south and to the north in search of power. For ye, the days are here that the sons of God will find their true reality in who they are in the word of God. And they will begin to release and walk in the reality of it. And the world around them will see 
the greatness of God's power in display through these ones, said the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Mm. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power towards us who believe? According to the working of His mighty word, power. The word power there is different from dynamics. It's called Kratos. Can you say that? We say Kratos, which means strength. So, the six words used to describe what raised Jesus and the power that raised Jesus is at work in you. This power, which is Kratos in the Greek, which is strength. So, we have Hupabalon, we have Megatos, what do we have again? We have energy. What do we have again? And we have Dunamis. What do we have again? We have Iskos. And what do we have again? We have Kratos. Six words used to describe the power that raised Jesus. And this power is at work in the believer. I thought somebody would say a better amen. And I look at how Paul puts it in Ephesians chapter number 3 and verse number 20. You see, if you read Ephesians 1, Ephesians 2, Ephesians 3, it talks so much about what is in the believer. From Ephesians 4 down to 6, tells you what you can do with what is inside. So, so much should be paid to what is inside. Because like I said, it's from within that Christ determines to affect every aspect of our life. From within, Christ determines to affect every aspect of our life. And until we know what is within, in the new man, we cannot affect our world. Everything that happens around us, we're chicken out. We keep running head together. We behave like the unbelievers. It's like there is no difference. But something has happened on your inside. So much power is at your disposal. And look at how he puts it. He said, now. Everybody say, now. Come on, say it with me. Say, now. Unto him that is able to do exceeding, again, abundantly above all that we ask or think how how where is this power church where is this power ladies and gentlemen where is this power it's in you it's in you when you realize this power that is at work in you you won't be afraid of the things around you you will be afraid of the terror by night you will be afraid of the pestilence at the noonday. You will know that everything about Psalm 91 has been fulfilled in you. The believer is not looking for how to have Psalm 91 fulfilled. No. Psalm 91 is fulfilled in the believer. Psalm 91 is a reality in the believer. We are no longer dwelling under. He lives in us. We are no longer dwelling. He lives in us. Instead of he that dwells in the secret place. No, we are no longer looking for secret place. In him we move. In him we live. In him we have what? Our being. The totality of our life is in him. This is the power of the new man. The new man is not void of it. He said that the communication of your faith become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that is in you which is in Christ. Everything that is in you in Christ Take delivery of it Acknowledge them And don't let the devil make you chicken out In times like this It's time to remind yourself who you are You are not a chicken You are not someone looking for who to help you You are the one looking for who to help Oh check it out He said now to unto him Would you give me another rendering Help me with another rendering Now all glory to God Who is able through his mighty power at work. Where is this work? This mighty power? Within us. Because it is from within that Christ determined to affect every aspect of our life. From within. This power is at work within you. You are allowing situations to define you. That is why you are looking small. But by the time you allow the word of God, that is your true identity, define you. Situation around you will bow. Hallelujah. Stop allowing the environment be what dictates to you. Don't allow the environment dictate. No, you dictate by the power that is at work with it. This is how Paul explains it in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. He explains the same power in Ephesians 6, verse 10. Look at how he put it. He said, Finally, my brethren, be strong where? 
They are strong in Christ. They are strong in your reality. Because our reality is Christ. If any man be where? Be strong in this Christ. Be strong in the law and the power of his mind. All of the things I've been explaining. Be strong in it. If there's anything to be strong in, don't be strong in your financial life. Don't be strong in your political life. Be strong in the law. The strength of the Lord is what controls every other thing. Don't ever expect to control your life from the outside. You must control your life from the inside. Can I say that again? Never you expect to control your life from the outside. Always determined to control your life from the inside. It is from within that Christ determines to affect every aspect of our lives. Stop allowing the outside to determine who you are. Be strong in the Lord. Don't be strong in your connection. You know, I have contact, I have connection, I know so and so, I know so and so. And a day comes, all of those things fail. Money failed in Egypt. Money is failing in our time. I was so shocked. I saw on the social media. Right there in Italy, people threw their money through their window. And on the street, money littered the street. People said, we are tired. Money has failed us. Because in the last one month, it's not been easy with citizens or people living in Italy. Not even their money could save them. And when, that is the frustration a man gets when he allows the outside to control him. It's expected that you allow from within to control the outside. Now, even when money fails and everything fails, there is a strength you receive from the inside. According to the, work, mighty, the working of his mighty power that is within us. Can I hear an amen from someone? So Paul took time educating the church in Ephesus. He said, this is where your strength stands from. From within. He when he pleased the Lord, he separated me from my mother's womb to reveal his son in me. The purpose is to reveal his son in me. The world can't reveal me. Only the son reveals me. Hallelujah. Talk with me your Bible. Let's read 1 Peter 5 verse 7. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7. Somebody blessed tonight. Hallelujah. Casting all your care upon him. For what does he do? What does he do? Next verse. Verse 8. Be what? Be what? And be what again? Your adversary. The devil. As a rolling lion. Walking about. Seeking whom he may devour. Does he devour all? Does he devour all? He seeks whom? Whom talks about the person? He does not devour all. He seeks whom? To devour. Why? Because the devil does not devour all. He will look for those who are vulnerable. Those who lack knowledge. Those who don't know their identity. And then he takes advantage of them. And then he begins to pray. So he said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary. Verse 9, quickly. Look at how the Bible talks about it. He said, whom resist where? Steadfast. Where do you resist him? You stand in the faith of the gospel. You stand in the faith of what Christ has done. You stand in the faith of the power that is at work in you. Resist him. It means you must know who you are to resist him. Because you are standing upon something. That is why he said, be strong in the Lord. It is in the strength of what you know that you stand against the devil. It is finally, brethren. Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. They put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand the wise of the devil. So, your ability to withstand is in your strength that you have in the Lord. Glory be to God forever. I'd like for you to just say, thank you, Jesus. Can you say it like you mean? Say, thank you, Jesus. Your victory is my victory. Your conquest is my conquest. The power demonstrated in your resurrection is at work in me. If the power that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in me, that same power shall quicken, shall fertilize my mortal body. Hallelujah. What God did in Jesus is for the new man. What God did in Jesus is for the new man. This must be strong. We must be strong in this. Our strength must not be in our finances. Our strength must not be in our contact. Our strength must not be the pe in the people we know. 
our strength must be in this truth of the world. Because what defines us is the word of God. Being born not of the corruptible seed, but of the incorruptible. The word of God that liveth and abideth for how long? Forever. We can stand on that. Hallelujah. We can stand on this word. It abided forever. Hallelujah. Now, this is why Paul, oh, come on. I, I remember a scripture now in Philippians, I'm sure, chapter 2. Let's check from verse 12. Yes, from verse 12. This is what, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll spend a little time there. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Take note of the word. Walk out your own salvation. Take note. It didn't say walk for your salvation. Walk out your. It means something has happened is inside from within. We say it is from within that Christ determined to affect every aspect of our life. So walk out what Christ has done. The six things we mentioned in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19. Walk it out. Come on. He didn't say work for it. Something had happened in you. He said work some that thing out. That is from within. Let the work see what is already happened. Or what has already happened in you. Now look at the next verse. The next verse. For it is that what are you supposed to work out? The God that is at work in you. Come on. You know we've used this scripture to threaten people. But this is what the Bible means to say. He said work out your salvation. That is what is already there with, uh, with fear and trembling. And then the next verse explains it. For it is God which worketh in you all to will and to do of his good pleasure. We'll use two different rendering. I like for us to use NLV, message, and maybe amplified rendering. Quickly from verse 12. He said, Dear friends, you have always followed my instructions when I was with you, and now that I am away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the result of your salvation. Can you see it? In times like this, it's the best time to show the result of salvation. The result of the new man. What have we learned over the years? What have we been taught over the years? This is the time to pull it out. Let the world see it. Hallelujah. Look at how Paul put it. This is energy. He said, it is even more important. Work hard to show the result of your salvation. Obey God with deep reverence and fear. Next verse now. Look at it. For God is working in you. Giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. What you have to work at is what God has already worked in you. And these are the things we've been talking about. They who pop along. We talked about the mega talks. We talked about the dunamis. We talked about the energy. We talked about the iskos. And we talked about the kratos. All of these things. At work in you. You, just the new man. Just one believer. The problem of the believer is that you are too loaded. You, do, you don't know it. Your problem is that you are too loaded. And Paul writing to the church in Philippi. He said the same way you have obeyed me in my in my, in my presence, in my absence also obey. What you should do? Walk out to show the result of this salvation. Let the world see it. Don't fear their fear. This is the best time to start praying for the world. Hallelujah. Message said what I am getting at, friends, is that you should simply keep on doing what you have done from the beginning. When I was living among you, you lived in responsive obedience. Now that I am separated from you, keep it up. Better yet, redouble your effort. Be energetic in your life of salvation. What life? Your life of salvation. Be what? Energetic. That is to work it out. Be energetic. This is not the time to be a weakling. The world all over. Many believers are confused. They are afraid. This is the time to be energetic with our work of salvation. Glory be to God. This is the time to teach people. Reverent and sensitive before God. Next verse. That energy is God's energy. An energy deep within you. Oh, 
I said it is from within that pride determines to affect every aspect of our life. Is there an energy within you? God Himself willing and working at what will give Him the most pleasure. Your life will bring, will bring praise to His name. Your life will bring glory to His name. And those of you watching by the way of internet, I want you to also understand your life will work pleasure to His name. Hallelujah. Finally, I like to use uh, amplified rendering. Amplified rendering. Finally, on this. And then I'll write, read the last scripture. Wow, this looks so tiny. Therefore, my dear ones, as you have always obeyed my suggestions, so now, not only with the enthusiasm you would show in my presence, but much more because I am absent. Work out, cultivate, carry out to the goal, and full complete your own salvation with reverence and awe, and trembling, self-distrust, with serious caution, tenderness of conscience, watchfulness, against temptation, timidly shrinking from whatever might offend God, and discredit the name of Christ. Next verse, verse 13. Now in your own, not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while, what is he doing? Effectually, at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and the desire both to win and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and the life. Glory be to God. My life is to the glory of God. My life is to the pleasure of God. My life is to society's purpose. I'm here as an expression of the work of salvation. I'm here as that as expression of the work of salvation. The world around me will see the work of salvation. Find the expression. Glory be to God. Oh, thank you, Father. We bless your name. And finally, we'll just read the scripture. We did that today in Colossians in chapter 2, verse 14. Thank you, Father. Jesus, Mary, dear name on Precious Lamb of God, Messiah, oh, the one. We want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, oh, my Father, for giving. expression in the world you find yourself. And the world will no longer dictate for you. Like Paul said, that when he pleased God to separate me from my mother's womb, and he will reveal his son in me. And that is exactly where we find ourselves today. 
where all of the deposit of God in us finds expression through us. Finally, this was what happened. And blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Verse, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over. The spoil means katagio. Katagio to spoil in the Greek, katagio means it, it, it nullified. It nullified the, the, the activities of principalities and powers. He triumphed over. In his victory is our victory. You didn't hear me. In his victory is our victory. We are his trophy. We are his trophy. And we must show it to our dying world. The dying world must know that the new man is his trophy. And for those who are not saved, we must take this trophy and show it to them. And we are the trophy of his victory. Hallelujah. And the world will know that something has happened. For God so loved the world, he gave. Jesus has died for the world. The sinners are like he has died. Only those who have come. And our call is to let them know something has happened on their behalf. God is not against the sinner. The sin debt has been paid. And not just that it's been paid, it's been overpaid. And it's time for sinners to acknowledge his death, burial, resurrection and ascension. And then be a partaker of all that Christ died for. There's so much power at work in you. The Bible says, to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that is at work on our inside. Wherever you are, I want you to bow down your heads. We're going to pray. Oh, Baba, those of you watching my world internet, I'd like for you to join us as we pray. Let's pray. And all of these things, God caused them to find expression. And that every day we we'll walk in the consciousness of it. Our problem is not the devil. Our problem is we're not walking in the consciousness of the deposit of God on our inside. That from within, Christ is determined to become effective in us in every aspect of our life. Let go shout out about the gate of all. Eh, get kush, eh, barande ke. Stone free, rates, to give up. Ferragist, imparafa. Oh, gragabagia, tomengi, gabongiza, kolomoto, si ke, kok, is ponve, e laman kradaba. Eh, zorita, mangala boho. Jean Gretas, to bradeha. Thank you, Father. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. I'd like for you to join your faith with me. Let's pray for as many that are watching this uh, program in any hospital, in any healing home. Some of them at home, some of them need healing. We speak this power. We release this power. We command sickness to disappear in the name of Jesus. Wherever you are hurting in your body, we ask that the balm of Gilead suit your pain right now. We command healing over your body right now in the name of Jesus. We extend our faith to you. We command that the devil cease from his maneuver over your body. In your body, we command him to desist from his operation. And today, we speak healing over you in the name of Jesus. And for those that are trusting God for one provision or the other, Father, we thank you. Because you have made all things well. You have made abundant provision. You have made abundant provision. And Lord, we ask, oh God, by compass or by contact, Lord, we ask, let supplies be made to these people. Supplies from saints, su supplies from neighbors. And Lord, we ask a miracle for those ones trusting you for provision in the name of Jesus. And above it all, we pray for as many who have not come to the knowledge of salvation. That by this word that we have shared, O oh God, that Christ will dwell in their heart by faith in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We we'll return all the glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's celebrate Jesus.